Are you anxious, depressed? Do you want to change your life? Do you think your life stinks? Well, you're in luck because today's episode, we have an interesting topic uh, called How Much Do You Believe Your Thoughts? I this just is got the it. Existential Stoic Podcast. <laughs> I'm Randy. That's Danny. What's up, Danny? What's up, Randy? So, Danny, I have been listening to a very interesting book this week. This is one of the books for me that kind of changes the way that I think. And uh, I think it could be helpful for other people. It's called Feeling Great. And it comes many years after another book called Feeling Good. All the, and it's, Was this it's like a, was quite, this a redo of Feeling Good or was it like a new yeah, book? Yeah, pretty much. It's okay. like updated. Yeah, okay, yeah, gotcha. Updated. That's what it sounded like. The title sounded like that, yeah. Yeah, and so it's got, you know, it's got everything that was in Feeling Good plus 20 plus years of more practical experience. And so it's really interesting because he goes into a whole bunch of stuff. And basically, you know, like all the things that people go to therapy for for years, he basically ends up resolving it in like one session. And <laughs> it's, it's kind of nuts. But if if you're skeptical, I would urge you to just like listen to the book and see for yourself because this stuff is kind of crazy. But he was talking in the beginning. I know. I'll let you talk. In a no, go ahead. You're good. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, but like in, in the beginning, he was talking about how, you know, there's in, when we have any of these feelings like anxiety, depression, fear, shame, guilt, whatever it is, there's two things going on. There's there's a thought and then there's belief in that that, that thought is true yeah. or belief in that thought. And He's like, they both need to be there or else it's not going to cause that feeling. And I'm thinking to myself, like, how is that possible? And he's like, well, just consider like the the notion the world's going to end in five seconds. You know, it's a very disturbing thought, yeah. but most people are like, yeah, that's not true. So it doesn't matter. But like, if you have other thoughts in your life, like, oh, I'm worthless or I'm, I'm not failure, good enough yeah. or, I'm a failure, something wrong with the world or all these things. And you believe it. Well, all of a sudden that's going to cause you to feel things that most likely are the reasons that you're going to therapy and you're on medications and all these different things. Yeah. So it's a very interesting. That's concept. actually really good. Yeah, I like that because, you know, it's funny. I didn't know where you were going with it with the title for some reason, but now I get it. But yeah, no, that makes sense because like I think a lot of a lot of philosophers have talked about this too, right? The idea that like, you know. It's and we've heard this a lot with positivity and negativity, right? Like, you know, being positive because then you kind of you kind of engender that and grow it over time as you kind of even if you force it or fake it at first, right? And I think that's part of it. it's just kind of reinterpreting stuff so that you don't believe these thoughts. Because it's funny too how much that can work too, is just switching your perspective on a situation can totally change how you see it and how you interpret it. You know, like it's um like, I'll give an example, like, you know, when like someone dies that you love, you know, it can be really upsetting, but you can also switch that and like, think like, oh, I'm so lucky that I got to spend time with them. Think about the good times, you know, stuff like that, where you celebrate their life instead of mourning their loss. And it can totally change how you interact with that event and that experience. And it's really cool. But I think you're right. I mean, it's, it is, it's all just like, you know, what we believe and what we tell ourselves. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah he even mentioned in the book about well, even epictetus 2000 some years ago had it right where he was saying it's not what happens to you in the world that causes you so much trouble it's your interpretation of it yeah it's all it is it's great and you know it's funny too because i think people like most people i think think of truth as like objective like things are true or false and it's funny because I think they don't really think about or maybe they don't think reflect on it or realize that like it's all made up. It's all contrived. And so, yes, that's scary in a sense and that there's like no truth. But at the, on the other hand, it's also freeing because it means we can reinterpret things however we want. I mean, it's like kind of the whole point of Camus Sisyphus, right? It's like that chance to walk back down the mountain is a chance to be conscious, to think, to reflect, to reinterpret re-examine things and reimagine in different ways and that changes our entire life and our entire state of being by simply rethinking it and it's funny mm. too because you know when you feel when you're feeling good right like your life <laughs> the things you have right seem good or seem enough but as soon as you're not feeling good all of a sudden everything takes on like a dark negative light nothing's good enough do you know what i mean like it's weird when you experience that but it's like why one day everything seems fine 
my house seems fine. My partner seems, you know what I mean? Like all this stuff seems good. I'm happy with it. And then the next day, all of that gets reinterpreted as, you know, the problem or, I'm, you know, and it's obviously not the stuff didn't change. So it must be my thinking changed. Mm hmm. Yeah. It's, it's also interesting how, like, you know, you hear all this stuff about, uh, like chemical disorders and all those different stuff. And, and it's like, it makes you think like, sometimes I think we're confusing the cause and effect, or maybe some type of correlation between things, because like, maybe it is, if you're having negative thoughts all the time, it changes the chemicals in your brain. Not that you're lacking these chemicals all the time, you know? And so, It's yeah, tough but... with that too, because I think we apply, we apply medicine so broadly that I think it's tough mm -hmm. too, because I'm sure, don't, I'm sure there's cases where people have imbalances and stuff that like, maybe the medication does help a little bit, but like, they're so willing to try these things on anybody. And you're right. Like probably mm -hmm. a lot of people, it's, you're treating a symptom instead of the cause. Like where the mm -hmm. cause is like, you know, it's not that they're necessarily depressed. I actually had this argument because I was seeing a psychiatrist for, for medication and like I was trying to get on this medication for something, but they kept trying to put me on depression medication. I'm like, I'm, I am depressed, but I'm not depressed in the sense that I need depression medication. Depression is caused by something else entirely. If I treat that, I won't be depressed. So I don't need mm -hmm. the medicine, you know, and it's like, but if you put me on that, then I'm going to be stuck on this thing forever you know because they're hard to get off of too that's Which, what i hate dude, and it doesn't even work like no in 50 percent of patients it causes like a 50 percent improvement like yeah. that's how that's how terrible it is and that's what everybody's on well dude think about how many medications that they made for something else and then found that it sort of worked for other things and they sell it for that like you yeah. know I mean, like boner pills great... were initially yeah. to treat heart issues yeah and they were yeah. like whoa we found out a gold mine here look at this <laughs> Hey, Tim, you seen this? <laughs> yeah, right. He's dead, but man, he's no, not he's... dead down there. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's it's crazy because like, so I've been doing this. Uh, I've been doing this course. It's like a six week, like Zoom call type of course uh, with uh, a company called Boulder Mind Body. They're out of Boulder, Colorado, and it's about chronic pain because you know, like the most recent. Uh, Neuro neurological evidence is that chronic pain is not actually any type of disease or illness or anything like that. It's just a malfunctioning of what's going on with your neural circuitry. And so I first, like, I mean, we've, we talked about this a whole bunch on the, on the thing, how like back in, I don't know, six months ago, I had some like really bad shoulder and back pain. Like, oh yeah. That was like January or so, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 And so like, you know, I, I went to all the doctors, they were rotator cuff injury. I mean, nothing, nothing on any, uh, on any image, like, uh, x-rays or anything like that, but they're like, yeah, it's rotator cuff. It's because you've been lifting and all this stuff. And then, uh, they put me on a whole bunch of medications and it just kept getting worse and worse and worse. And then I found these books, healing back pain and mind body or mind over back pain and some other ones by, uh, John, Dr. John Sarno. And it turns out that, maybe there were some other causes for it, like, you know, unconscious rage, different things like that. And then there's even some other things like fear of the actual injury. Like when, you know, the, you get in this uh, pain and fear spiral. And so anyways, I've been doing this course. That's just crazy because I had some, like, I had some like sciatica and lower back and neck pain for like over 10 years, chronic pain. I thought, you know, and, and the worst part was I went and I got x-rays and they're like, oh, yeah, it looks like there's some arthritis yeah. there. So that's there's you're you got this for life. And, you know, and it's like, oh, you know, spondylolisthesis, you're done. Like, that's just it. You're going to be just in pain for life. The best thing you can do is like take pain medications, go to chiropractors, do all this. Stuff. A bunch. <laughs> yeah. And so I and I felt like really hopeless about it. I was and I got caught yeah. in like the pain fear spiral because like the more I would just obsess about it, the worse I would get. And. And so then I started doing this stuff. I did the mind body and like literally this by the, after the first session of the Boulder mind body course, all of the chronic pain that I've had for like 11 years or more just disappeared. That's awesome, gone. Though. Like, yeah. yeah. And it's just, it's just nuts. And like, yeah. So anyways, in that, in that course, he was talking about these books, feeling good and feeling great. And it's kind of like the same thing with, uh, anxiety, depression, other type of, oh, yeah negative feelings that have been lingering a long time is just like kind of a shift that'll change it.
No, I think that's really, it's, I think this is like something we're starting to realize. I think people are starting to realize is that like, don't get me wrong. Modern medicine is great for a lot of things. It is very good for a lot of things. We've yeah, learned for, to like, for diabetes, for <laughs> infections, for we've learned to watch our type hands. of trauma. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, you get an accident, great. you definitely need, you know, for sure. But if it, but if it can't fix it, if it can't fix it immediately or pretty quickly, it may not be the answer. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Like, I think it also causes us because we have put so much stock in the medications and stuff. It causes us not to examine other areas where that could be causing this or could be the actual cause of it. Like literally, you know, like, and I think we forget too how powerful our minds are. Like people forget all the time. Like you can make yourself feel sick very easily. You can make yourself depressed. You can make yourself anxious. You can do all these things to yourself. You can make yourself have a fever. You know, like okay. if you think you're sick, you can, you'll start psychosomatic showing symptoms. Like it's really amazing, but it happens. And we forget that. So like, of course, you know, pent up rage, Things that we're not dealing with are going to cause problems. That fear is going to cause problems. They're going to manifest as pain because that's how our body tells us information. Well, like I, a lot of people like poo poo this whole mind body thing, but like here's an example that pretty much everyone can relate to. Okay. So okay. a lot of people have probably been broken up with. And afterwards, you feel like your heart is broken. Like literally in your chest, you feel like something is broken. But guess what? There's nothing wrong in there. Nothing's going on in there. It's 100% mental. And that's causing a feeling in your body, which it can do anywhere else in your body with anything else in your body. Because it makes sense though, right? Think about it. Like our bodies are an expression in a sense of also our conscious state, right? Like when, we, when we're really excited, we have a lot of energy, right? When we're really happy, we feel really elated. Everything's great. When you depressed, you feel down, right? Your body kind of mimics your mental state almost perfectly right and it's also i think a way for it to communicate that you know something's wrong like maybe not physically wrong but something might be mentally wrong and the only way to kind of communicate it to you yourself is to also cause that pain and cause you to slow down and stuff i think that's absolutely true i mean i think anybody if you reflect on it, you've probably seen this in your own life i mean just the way that we can change a situation but by just you know like, a good example too is like you know Going somewhere fun, like an amusement park, right? You're excited. It's going to be a good time. If somebody break, broke up with you right before you go, that's going to be a miserable trip, right? And it's not because the amusement park changed. It's not because the people changed that you were going with. It's not because you're less excited about going. It's because you have something else on your mind, right? That's going to totally just, you know, put, you know, dark colored glasses over everything you see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So, what was the topic we were talking? Oh, yeah. How much do you believe your thoughts? Yeah. So, yeah, it's interesting because, like, a lot of the areas where we get stuck in life, it's because we have this thought that we <laughs> believe is true. Oh, dude, how many people? To, I, I can I can't even count the number of people I've come across in college and other programs and stuff where like they think they're gonna fail so they don't succeed, and like it's as simple as that. Like there's nothing, and it's funny because I tell people all the time, there's nothing everybody can do. If somebody else can do it, you can do it. There's always going to be cases of like, you know, your Beethoven's, your whatever that have this talent and all, but it doesn't mean you can't do that well, right? They might be an exception. And I think we get in our heads that we're not good enough to do it. And all of a sudden it's all affirmed in the world, right? It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. And I think we forget that about our thoughts that like, what you think is true will become true, whether you like it or not. Like, it's not mm -hmm. like it's magically going to change, because if you think that way, you're going to see and interpret everything that way. So if you think you're a failure, you're going to find ways to fail. You're going to interpret things as failings all the time. And it's just going to compound until you, you know, you make yourself motionless, essentially. It, it, was, it was really interesting, too, because I was reflecting back on a time when I was most depressed in my like one of the times when I was most depressed in my life when? It was because I was I was about to get uh, married to somebody that I didn't want to. And I, I thought this, I was yes. going to disappoint. I thought I was going to disappoint my whole family, her whole family, her. You know, I thought that it was this big catastrophe. And when I look at it, it's like, well, there were a couple of thoughts that I had that I believed were true that may or may not have been been completely true. But they were causing all this, all this pain. Like one was that you know I need to get married, and that needs to happen now. Another was, yeah, I can't, I can't uh, not marry her because we're already engaged. And so, like, these were two things that, like, 
they just caused me to get into like really oh. deep, dark depression. And then once, once I addressed those and, you know, canceled the engagement, like literally that day, I was the happiest person on earth. Like depression was gone. Lifted. Yeah, because you over. felt trapped. You felt boxed yeah. in and trapped. And that happens to people all the time when there's outside, when they believe these obligations have a real hold over them. You know, and like, especially like you see it a lot, especially with younger people, like where, you know, upsetting their parents or something or not living up to what they think their expectations are and stuff. That can be this like really tight cage that you place around yourself that really can just be a literally a weight. It feels like heavy. And when you free it, like you said, you'll feel better than you've ever felt because all of a sudden you're living your own life. And it's pretty incredible, actually, how powerful our thoughts are in that sense. It's really amazing. I was like Nietzsche always talked about it as a he said it's like he calls it the internalization of man like where when we can't express things outwardly we express them inwardly against us it's like pent up rage you mentioned right which is a good one like Mm -hmm. something where you can't like you're not gonna freak out in public or slam somebody against the wall because that's gonna you know that's not right but you're also not finding a way to express that drive that's healthy so instead it gets turned on you and exercise you know uh allowed to be sort of mm-hmm. go wild internally, which causes, you know, depression, anxiety, stress, you know, pain, all kinds of things. And so we have to like untie that and find healthy ways to deal with these things to then, you know, feel better. Yeah, absolutely. Like the books that I've read, they have a whole, uh, the people who like don't express anger uh, outwardly are usually the people who have the most suppressed internal rage. And like oftentimes they'll have diseases associated with that suppressed internal yeah. rage. Oh, dude, the amount mm-hmm. of diseases and like pain stress can cause is like amazing, you know, mm-hmm. any of these things. And I think like finding a healthy way to express it is just as simple as like identifying that you're feeling it, you know, like that you feel angry, finding a way to like get that energy out, like exercise, you know, doing something that's like physical, maybe helps get rid of it, but, you know, just or channeling into like creative work or something you know like we talked about that before of like you know when we were transitioning jobs like using like our 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 anger at our current job our unhappiness with yeah. it as like a motivation right so taking that those feelings and using that to push us in a positive direction is a really good example i think of transforming it yeah and the stress thing that you just mentioned is interesting because there was that ted talk by uh mcgonagall the one who wrote yeah Super better and she was talking about how stress all depends how you think about it. Your belief on stress, is it good or is it bad? Or they did, they did these studies with people on stress and it turned out that if you felt like you were stressed on a regular basis and you thought that stress was bad for you, you would die a lot sooner than if you were stressed on a regular basis and you thought stress was good for you. Well, I used to think like when I, I remember in college, like I used to like the time stress because of due dates. I used to like that because actually I wouldn't have gotten my stuff done without it. Like it helped motivate and put pressure on me to do the things I needed to do. So I never looked at it as a bad thing. I didn't like look forward to it. You know, like nobody looks forward to like, you know, exams and stuff at the end of the semester, but that pressure like did help, you know? And so in some sense, I knew I was also doing it to myself because it was like a way for me to motivate myself to get what I needed done in a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So there you have it. How much do you believe your thoughts? Are they thoughts worth believing? And uh, and if they're not, can you change them? You know? Oh, there you go. Absolutely. So this is the Existential Stoic Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, we have hundreds of other episodes for you to listen to. Just as gripping, thrilling, informative, and fun as this one. Uh, You can find them on YouTube or anywhere you get your podcasts. Uh, anyways, we'll catch you again later in the week and then the week after that and the week after that and after that and until uh, the end item. of time or whenever. <laughs> <laughs> or whenever. But uh, thank you so much for listening. We'll catch you guys later. This is the Existential Vogue Podcast. I'm Randy. That's Danny. I'll see you later, Danny. Later, Randy. <laughs>